Well, hello. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I am honored and uh, I tell you a little emotional about uh, coming to you today. Um, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm filled with joy and appreciation uh, and thanksgiving um, and praise to the God of the Bible because he has allowed me and has allowed you to triumph in 2022. Yes, the next time uh, you hear from me, my friends, our theme will be different. But I tell you what a year 2022 has been. And the Lord certainly has kept his word. He kept his word for me and he kept it for you. The fact that we're here today talking to each other, it says that we triumphed in 2022. The song by the group, The Winings, come to mind, one, and, and they're one of the most, uh, pr most powerful, prolific gospel groups ever. And they, they did a song entitled Millions. And the word says, the lyrics are, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Well, my friends, millions didn't make it uh, throughout 2022. But God spared our lives. And I thank God that not only are we alive, not only am I alive today in 2022, just a day or so from 2023, but I love Jesus. He, he kept me saved. He kept me in love with him. I still have my fire for the Lord and I have my joy for Jesus Christ. And I'm excited about the things that the Lord is doing. I am honored. I am proud to be a Christian. I'm glad that the Lord saved me from my sins, washed me in his blood and filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I'm glad, my friends, that God has blessed my paths to cross with people like you, both near and far. Those who will see this today, I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you for the way that you prayed for us this year. Thank you for the way that you've stood for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the kind comments and things that you, uh, the things that you posted, the things that you said, the words of encouragement that you gave us. My friends, you cannot underestimate the, how important uh, your feedback has been. And, and while I'm talking, those of you who are still in love with Jesus and, and you, you're so grateful that the Lord has blessed you. I, I want to invite you to comment. Praise the Lord. Uh, say something to us. Uh, testify to the goodness of the Lord. God has spared us. He's given us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And the truth is, as I heard one man say, he's been better to us than we deserve. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for your support. And I tell you, you have inspired this man of God. I really, my friends, I really feel, and I'm asking God to give me the ability to earn the support that you've given me, to walk upright, to not be a disappointment to Christ, nor to you. And should the Lord delay his coming and allow us to live to see 2023, uh, it is my sincere desire that we we walk the walk and talk the talk and that you and I together make great strides in the name of the Lord. I have so much to be thankful for as this year closes. I'm grateful that God has blessed me to be the pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I think that God has given me to find his congregation in all of the body of Christ. Now, I may be a little biased on that one, but that's the way I feel. Uh, I thank God for people who pray for me. The saints stand by me. The saints support me. The saints lift me up in prayer. And as I've said before, it takes something to be a member of the upper room because the upper room is not some little church in the corner that makes no noise, who don't bother anybody. We just smile and uh, wave and move on. No, we're into something all the time. We're standing for Jesus Christ. 
We're fierce defenders of the faith, and many times uh, it causes persecution to come our way. So it takes a special person to be a member of this church because we still believe that correction is a part of preaching. We still believe that there is a judgment coming. We still believe that there is a difference between right and wrong, holy and unholy, clean and unclean. We still believe in come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I want you to know in this day and time, when you, when you actually believe the Bible, and you believe in, and I'm not going to call it old time Christianity, I'm just going to call it biblical Christianity. Oh, it causes you to incur the wrath of many, whether it's political, whether it's religious, whether it's personal, all of these things and people uh, say what they will and do what they will. And so uh, the fights that I get involved in, the members have to take up those fights as well. And I tell you, I have never seen a group of people who are more dedicated to the task and to the work that we're doing for the Lord. And so uh, for the privilege of being the pastor of this church, I am so thankful. I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to God as we close 2022 for being the prelate of North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. What a tremendous jurisdiction we have. We have some of the finest men and women in the body of Christ. I thank God for my supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae. What a wonderful woman of God she is and what a privilege it is to work with her. And uh, I don't, if I get started I'm talking about my chief of staff, my first assistant, my second assistant, uh, Superintendent Quick, Superintendent Stone, Superintendent Gates, and then the administrative staff and chairman of our elders council, uh, Cooper and oh, uh, Gary, I'm getting in trouble because I'm beginning to call names. And once you start calling names, you know, uh, uh, president of our men's department, uh, Wilson and, and King over evangelism. And, 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 and sometimes I, I, I get the titles wrong for forgive me. But we have just wonderful, wonderful people uh, who help make North Carolina third what it is. Thank God for the saints in Virginia. Thank God for the members of the jurisdiction in North Carolina. Thank God for the members uh, of the jurisdiction in South Carolina. Uh, God has blessed us up there in uh, Virginia. We thank God for Superintendent Willie Bamberg. In South Carolina, we thank God for Superintendent Tommy E. Quick. God God's doing great things and all in between, there are tremendous men and women of God that make North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction function. Thank God for people like Sister Chandra Murray, who is over our missions department. I want you to know that the work of NC third is not limited to Raleigh. It's not limited to North Carolina. Virginia and South Carolina, but all over the world in foreign lands. We have missionaries going out. We support their work as we're reaching souls for Jesus and doing things to help uh, those who are in need, passing out coats, passing out Bibles, passing out food, doing all kinds of things while fighting for the lives of the unborn, while fighting the good fight of faith. What a what a time we have together in North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. I want to thank God for uh, the opportunity to serve and to be a part of the church that I call the greatest church in the world, the church of God in Christ. I thank God for our church and uh, what God is doing and thank God for our leadership. Our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, he's doing a tremendous job leading our church. Listen, when I entered into um, 2022, um, I had at my side one of the most wonderful people that God placed on this earth, and that is my lovely wife, Pamela. And I thank God that God has watched over us. My friends, I want to just tell you something. Uh, when we began to make our stand for COVID and, and, and fight to keep the church open, I, 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 maybe I've mentioned this to you before. I did have one concern. I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I don't know whether we're going to live through this pandemic or not. I do know this. Your word says that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. 
And God, I'm out here. I, I'm believing you. We're fighting and we're, we're, we'll be celebrating week 137, I believe it is, uh, this, this Sunday. 137. So as I speak to you, we're in our 136th week back in live services. A wonderful lady stood by my side, my lovely wife. And she said, honey, if God says do it, then let's go for it. Let's see what happens. We're going we're to trust God. We just heard a report where one uh, preacher said that one of the things that caused so many pastors to close their churches so quickly was the first ladies. The wives were afraid and it meant no harm, but they didn't want their husbands to die. They didn't want to die. They didn't want members to die. And the, and the wives were pulling on the husband saying, close the church. It would be easy for me to say, well, had my wife did that, I would have kept the church open. To be honest with you, I don't know what I would have done. But here's the thing. That was never an issue because the wife that God has given me said, honey, if God says it, then let's go with God. And I prayed. I'll tell you this. I did pray. And I said to the Lord, I said, God, if COVID has to take one of the two of us, God, please let it take me because she's out here following me and I'm following you. And Lord, I, if it's, if it's got to happen, then God, I, uh, I volunteer to go. And the Lord said, I'll do something better than that. I'll spare both of you. So I'm grateful as 2022 closes, Pamela is yet by my side and God is using her. As I speak to you, she's in prayer, conducting a prayer that she does every Thursday. Women from all over join in on the prayer, prayer call that God has given her to do. And she's calling up heaven right now. What a tremendous woman of God she is. I thank God for my children, my daughter, Crystal, the preacher. I call her the preacher in the family. My son, Patrick. I thank God for him. My son-in-law, the elder John Amanchuku, God has caused his ministry to explode in 2022. He's going all over the country. He wrote that tremendous book. If you don't have it, pick it up. Erased. Oh, you got to have it in your library. You got to read it. It will change your life. And God's using him. I want to thank God for my grandchildren. I have three of them. And I'm so grateful. And that God has spared all of us. Yes, my friends, I'm, I, just wanna, I just want to just say thank you to the Lord. My mama. Hallelujah. God has spared my mother, a beautiful, a beautiful, spry, 87 year old saint of God who is on fire for the Lord. And I thank God for what God is doing in her. I thank God for my brothers. I thank God for Tom, Gabriel and Heath. The Lord has spared their lives. My friends, I have so much to be thankful for so much. I thank God for this nation. She's going through. There's a whole lot of things going on. But I tell you what, I'm fighting for it and, and, and we're standing and doing everything we can to win as many people to the Lord. And the Bible says, blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. America, whatever you do, don't forget God. Uh, the, the, the explorer said that America is great because America is good. And when America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. I'm excited. Over my shoulder, you see the triumph. The next time our new theme will be up, will be on, uh, on display. But tonight I want, I want you to join me. Right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, we are starting our end of the year revival. And I'm excited about our guest tonight. Prophetess Barbara Calloway is going to deliver the word of the Lord. And uh, she's been here before. Many of you have heard her before. You know that she has a word from the Lord. And an extra ble blessing, uh, the son of this church, one of the sons of the church, his dad, founded the, the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. His dad preached me out of my sins. The late great James Henry Turner, his son Chris, will be here tonight. Listen to this. Doing the praise and worship tonight in our praise and worship service. And tomorrow night, he will be this featured guest speaker. So what a, what a powerful combination uh, uh, he's giving us. And I want you to come out and be a part of it. So tonight, a prophet is Callaway. Tomorrow night, the elder Chris Turner. And on Saturday night, New Year's Eve, there's going to be a combination. 
Evangelist Willie Range, that mighty evangelist for Jesus Christ, a tremendous friend of mine. God's man is going to be here tag teaming with me. And, uh, and then yours truly after uh, Elder Reigns, Evangelist Reigns have ministered the word. Yours truly will give you what God has given me for 2023. And it is our goal and desire and our aim at midnight as the new year comes in to be able to close out the service uh, right then because we're going to be right back here at 11 a.m. We're going to have, like last Sunday, we will have only the one 11 a.m. Uh, service uh, this coming Sunday, New Year's Day. And then uh, uh, the rest of the year, we'll be back on the 8 and the 11, our normal uh, time schedule. And uh, because it's uh, New Year's Day at the 11 a.m. service, what we're going to do, we will start our communion services uh, and feet walk feet washing service uh, back uh, in February. So I'm excited. I, I love you. I, I just feel that, uh, uh, Brother Gary, today has been special to me, man. I, when, as, as the time drew near and, and, and my mind uh, went to all of the tremendous people, and speaking of tremendous people, I don't know anybody whom I appreciate more. You don't see him, but you hear me uh, refer to him all the time. Brother Gary Leach, what a godsend and a dear friend uh, this man of God is. And I tell you something, he knows this stuff. Gary, Gary knows how to make me look good. Now, that takes some doing. And I told him one day, I said, Gary, you could make a corpse come alive. He, he's, he's just a tremendous man. He loves Jesus Christ and, uh, and he loves me. And he loves this ministry and he, he gives us his all. And the truth is, you're no better than those who serve with you. Thank God for all of our camera operators. Thank God for the sound text. Thank God. How, how could I almost forget our praise and worship team? Hey, if you see me, you see them. And these young ladies and gentlemen, they sing Sunday in and Sunday out, Thursday night in, Thursday night out. Whatever we ask of them, they just do it and make it happen. And I am so grateful to them. And uh, I, can't, I can't talk about them without talking about uh, the maestro himself, uh, Elder Clarence Rocky Rayford. What a tremendous minister of music he is and a tremendous man of God. And our church house band, you know it's smoking <laughs> By the way, we got the nickname, the Monica Church House Band, from uh, the late, great Bishop Rance Allen. He actually gave our church band, <laughs> I almost said church house band, he gave our church band that name. And it stuck. So all these years, we've been calling it the church house band because none other than Rance Allen himself referred to our uh, ch church band our musicians as the church house band and i'm just uh, so grateful there's so many other things i want to thank god for our board my tremendous chairman chairman joe morgan and those deacons who worked so hard to make things happen uh someone asked me one time they said wouldn't why do you preach the things that you do my answer was because i can then i explained it i have a board who stands by me who pray for me and they've said to me many times pastor as long as it's the word of god and as long as God has given it to you, whatever God gives you will stand by you. And let me tell you something. For 35 years, I'm in my 35th year here. They have stood by me. They have kept their word. And I thank God. So, Happy New Year to you. I pray that you had a, a, a Merry Christmas. And if the Lord delay his coming and God allows us to live. He's going to strengthen us in 2023. I'm telling you right now, it's going to keep you. You're not going to be anybody's victim. Despite how things may look at times, we win. We're going to stay with Jesus and we're going to even love him more. You know, his love for us can't improve because his love is perfect. But our love for him can grow. And can improve. And I want to love him more 
today than I did yesterday. And I want to love him more tomorrow than I love him today. Because, oh my, God is so good. God is so good. It is such a blessing to be a Christian. It's such a blessing to be born again. And for those of you, as I close, who during this year, this year you suffered losses. You lost loved ones. Some got sick. Some are sick now and fighting uh, various battles. I want to say to you, hold to his hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Jesus has not forgotten about you. You are not dismissed in the eyes of God. I know what Satan is saying. You, you try to make you feel like you're on the sidelines. But in God, there are no sidelines. Paul said, I have learned that whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. I have learned how to abase and abound. I have learned how to uh, uh, have all things. I've learned how to suffer need. I've learned how to serve hungry and full. See, what he was saying was when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He was saying in any and every situation of life that I may find myself in, I can serve God and, and, and hear the voice of God and accomplish the work of God and the will of God. In those situations, I can do all things. I know we take that scripture and we apply it to building a supermarket or going to the moon or doing something extraordinary. But the context is I've learned how to serve God, whether I'm hungry or not. The context was I thank you, Philippians, for sending me an offering and I needed it. And thank you. But it's fruit that will abound to your account. But just know and it's going to help me do the will of God, the work of the Lord. But just know, even if I hadn't have received it, I was going to do it all anyway, because I've learned, I've learned. And my friends, I've learned. I've learned a lot of things from the Lord this year. I've learned a lot of things, and I pray that you have, and I pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you. Father, we just praise you, oh God, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to triumph. Thank you, God, for keeping us and causing your face to shine upon us. Touch that lonely soul, that lonely heart, that person right now who feels that they're alone. God, let them know that they're not alone. If there's someone watching and they're not born again, pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I come before you. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me right now. In the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. For that Christian who is in the bed, who is convalescing, who is sick. Oh, God told me to tell you, you're going to get well. He's going to raise you up. God, move in the name of Jesus. That senior citizen, some are surrounded by loved ones and, fam and family. Others have no, no one. But I want you to know you're not alone. The Lord is with you. David said, when my mother and my father forsake me, when they die, the Lord will take bear me up. God is with you. Father, we just praise you right now. Touch that person, that person who is lonely. Touch that individual who is in need. God, supply every need in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for the joy of Jesus. Thank you for the joy that accompanies living this kind of life. We praise you for all things, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Well, join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for good preaching, good preaching and teaching for the next three nights. Tonight, Friday night and Saturday night, we're going to bring the new year in should the Lord delay his coming and allow us to live. We're going to bring it in in Jesus name. Come and join me right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ. Thank you.